The next thing I want to show you is my personal favorite part of the Webull trading app, and it's something that you don't see a lot of other apps out there doing, and that is a built-in paper trading simulator. There is a lot that you can do in Webull, and that can make things overwhelming to a complete beginner, but what they offer over here under the Markets tab, if you click here on Paper Trade, there's a built-in paper trading account that functions in the same exact manner as if you are investing real money with the Webull app. So by default, we have $100,000. But if you wanted to, let's say, for example, be even richer in fake money, you can click on the reset button and you could reset this to a million dollars, for example. So when I hit the continue button, and then if I hit confirm reset, it's now going to give us $1 million of paper account value when we can now invest this into stocks, we could also invest it into options and test out your strategy before actually committing real money. So if you're just looking looking for a trading simulator, this can be a great place to find that. So what we're going to do now is actually invest in a couple of stocks using this paper value, and it's going to function in the same way as it would if we were using the real money to invest. So let's start off with investing in the S&P 500. If we click here on stocks, it's going to bring us to a list of popular symbols with Google and Apple. But in this case, we want to invest in the S&P 500. And as mentioned before, for VOO or the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF is a great way to accomplish this. Now we are in the after hours of the market and that's because it actually was a holiday today and I think we closed at 1 p.m. or something like that, but it should still let me place the order. If not, we will pick this back up later on. But what I wanna do now is click on the paper trade button. Now at the top right, it offers you options here for customizing your view if you wanted to move things around. If you click at the top right, Right, you can do the turbo trader view and it's going to give you a more concise view of the particular asset but for now we're just going to go back to the classic view and we're going to take a look at a couple of details here on this page what we're looking at by default up top there is the candlestick chart at a one minute frequency which is a very zoomed in look at the s p 500 if we change this here for example to a 30 minute interval we're going to get less candles and things will make a bit more sense here but you can also for example bring break this out over a five day window here and it will show us what the S&P 500 has done over the last five days. You can also toggle here between using indicators and there's all sorts of technical analysis indicators built right in. So if you wanted to do a moving average, which is a popular one, we can select the MA here and this is going to show us the moving average of the S&P 500. And by default, I think they're showing us the five day, the 10 day and the 20 day moving average average. If you're curious about the volume, you can click here and it's going to add the chart at the bottom. RSI, relative strength indicator, can be one that people often use for looking at if a stock is overvalued or undervalued. But understand that there's no one indicator out there that's going to tell you exactly when to buy and sell a stock. These are just different tools that you may choose to use in your tool belt. And the cool thing with Webull is it's all built right in from the beginning and you don't have to go off and use different tools to get access to this technical data. And if you find it to be overwhelming, you just turn off these indicators and you can go back to a more basic view. Now, if we scroll down, we can see details about actually placing a paper trade order. By default, this is a buy order, but we could also toggle this over to a sell order. And right below that, we see various different types of orders. So what I want to explain now is the different order types in the Webull app and the ones that you yourself may want to use. The most common is the market order. And this is where you're looking to buy the underlying security at the market price. So it's going to fall between the current bid and ask of that asset. So in this case here, it would be between 480 and 50 cents and then 485. Now the market is closed right now because of the holiday, but you do have this option here for extended hours trading where they will place orders up through 8 p.m. Eastern time on days that the market is open. But just understand that in aftermarket hours, there's a lot less participants. So you can have less favorable conditions for your market order being filled, and there can be a greater spread there or the difference between the bid and the ask. So in layman's terms here, there can be greater swings in the price that you're paying if you execute orders in off market hours. But that's the market order. If you wanted to use a limit order, this is where you are saying, I want to buy it at a fixed price or better. So if you were worried about the spread there, the difference
difference of the 480 50 all the way up to 485 and you were saying I only want to buy this if it's $480 or better what you could do here is set a limit order and you could set that price to whatever you want it gives you the options of the bid and the ask but you could say for example 480 is the price I'm willing to pay if it's better we'll take it but if it's even a penny higher we're not going to let that order go through that is what a limit order is and on the sell side it works in the same manner except you're specifying the minimum amount of money that you would be willing to sell those shares or that share for and that is helpful for basically setting a price that you are willing to sell for if you're looking to sell it at a price that it's higher than where it is today so if I wanted to pay exactly 480 or better I would use a limit order and you could set that quantity here but I first want to show you the other order types a stop order is going to set a stop price higher than the current price and if the market rises above that price the market buy order is triggered now that might sound kind of weird as to why you would want to trigger a market order buy if it breaks above a certain price but if you get into technical analysis and you are trying to track a stock that is breaking out you might for example want to enter a position if it breaks out of a certain price level so that's one scenario where you might use a stop order a stop limit order allows you to set a stop price higher than the current price and if the latest price rises to that stop price the limit buy order is triggered that's a little bit different because you're combining the stop order and the limit order it essentially means if it goes above that stop price it would then activate your limit order and then that set limit price or better would have to be met so let's say for example you wanted to activate this order after a breakout but you wanted to still pay only a certain price maybe if it came back down to a lower side of the trend then you could have it activate that limit order and then a trailing stop order is going to track or trail the lowest price of the stock based on criteria that you set so if you wanted to have an order in place that said hey if this stock drops more than five percent on any given trading day for example I want to automatically sell here and possibly cut my losses or maybe you set a trailing stop on a stock that you think could continue to go up but if that rally loses momentum and you see a drop on a given trading day it would automatically trigger that order so those are the order types in most cases you're going to be either using a limit order or a market order and for the case of this paper trade we're just going to do a market order here of VOO the S&P 500 and unfortunately unless we do a limit order we're not going to be able to do the after hours trading just for demonstration purposes so what I will do is show you how to place a limit order so what we're going to do here here is click in this box and we're going to set the limit price right here at the ask and this should fill immediately at 485 you don't want to do this yourself because what you're doing is guaranteeing that you're paying the higher side of the spread but if you wanted to guarantee that your order was filled you could look into following a similar approach at this point our order here says we want to buy at 485 or better one single share of VOO and we're including the extended trading hours and as far as time in force, we can have this just be open throughout the trading day, or you can set this here for GTC, which is good till canceled, but it is actually only good for up to 60 regular days. So there's a two month limit, give or take on those orders. But if you wanted to have limit orders or trailing stops or things like that set in place for a longer period of time, you don't necessarily have to go in and manually place those orders every single day. You could use a good till canceled. We're going to leave it at day and then we're going to click on the paper trade button and at that point we can see here in the top right that they are working on the order now if I refresh here we can see if it was placed and it looks like it's not placing the order probably because of these extended trading hours but once we're back into open market hours we can actually go ahead and invest in the S&P 500 using fractional shares once our $50 deposit settles and what we're gonna do now is just cancel this order that way it doesn't mess with any anything going on with our trading simulator we might revisit this later so we're just going to click on cancel order and then click on yes and just like that the order has been canceled and if we go back here to our paper trading account and refresh you can see that we're still sitting here at the one million dollar in fake buying power but I would highly recommend using this paper trader and getting well versed in the Webull app practice a couple of orders that way you know what it is that you're doing and this can avoid any human error that could result in losing money when placing trades with the Webull app.